Good afternoon everyone, my name is Wei I'm a data analyst at JobTech. So if the last person is unable to hear me, please, please sound off. Alright, so the title of my presentation today is Analyzing Jobs with Python. So uh, the first part I will go through how marketable Python is in the Singapore's job market. And then the second part I will be going through how at JobTech we have used Python to analyze the online jobs data. So before we dive right into it, let me do a little bit of a shameless marketing here. So uh, at JobTech, it's a, it's a data analytics startup. We seek to connect people to jobs. So how we are doing so is with these three main pillars. So the first <coughs> pillar is the job seeker platform. So um, I'm not sure if you guys have ever encountered the issue as job seekers yourself of having to manage multiple accounts on different job bots. So our founders have came together to try and solve that, to, get, to aggregate all the jobs in one single portal. So we have expanded the list to include uh, Forbes 2000 companies uh, and even direct jo companies uh, c jobs such as Facebook, JP Morgan, so on and so forth. And this list is an expanding list. And we thought, why not expand this to the job at the employer side as well? So what we are basically doing is to help employers find the best matched candidates in the most automatic and objective manner. So in the same sense, job seekers will be pushed jobs that match them the best. And how we are doing this is with the technology that our CEO has developed in this And the fuel for our the fuel for our analytics platform is the online jobs data that we have collected. So we are analyzing uh, millions of jobs globally every week, and this jobs data is that we are accrued has uh, is what's powering our job matching technologies and uh, real time data. And because of the uh, coverage of the data, it has put us in a unique position to sh shed light on the labor market. So. Um, after, after when I first joined the company, the first thing I did was find out how marketable Python is in the job market. So uh, uh, this is the data I've run. So this what this is the most sought after skills and domain among Singapore's technology jobs. So uh, in terms of the technology jobs in Singapore, anyone to take a guess what's the top skill that employers mention? Anyone have a good idea? Sorry. Python. Python. <laughs> okay. So Java. Um, that's quite a good guess. So I hope the Python guys won't be disappointed because I was a little bit. So in terms of the programming languages, Java is first, followed by uh, SQL and Python and so forth and so on and so forth. But it's not surprising here. The more general uh, terms such as computer science, troubleshooting, project management and maintenance, maintenance management are quite central to technology jobs in Singapore. So it's a little bit sad to say that Python is around 14. But I think in terms of the absolute counts at 6,000 in the period of 10 months from July 2017 to April 2018 is still quite a respectable amount. In terms of the percentage of the technology jobs, it's about 10%. And on a per month basis, the trend, uh, the trend is susceptible to seasonality. But if you look at the absolute counts per month, it's about 500 or so uh, jobs requiring Python. So the attendance of PyCon is about 300 plus. So I think it, it, it measures up. And so at JobTech, we really love to use Python. So we use it to, proto we found it to be good for prototyping, modeling, and uh, models and uh, analysis. And for, so we, we very often we need to uh, come out to, to obtain certain references online or onto and refer to certain ontologies. So in this case, uh, to do it real quick, we do beautiful so scrapey, all this. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's easy to use, it has been in the community for a long time. And for extraction and cleaning, because we are working in a text-heavy environment, we mainly use the Python regex or Flash text and NLTK. So I'll be sharing more about this in a moment. And for modeling analysis, it's the more usual, the scikit-learn, scipy, and so on and so forth. So the little furball you see at the bottom is created with uh, word to vec and that word x. And for visualizations, depends on the situation. We would use uh, Seaborn, Plotly, and so on and so forth. So a little bit more about this. So we, ha we have a lot of jobs data and this is what enabled us to create uh, things like this. So this is just uh, showing the s relations between skills and with that, uh, we are able to create meaningful clusters with the, in terms of the broader topics, are they under engineering, data analytics, so on and so forth. So um, that's, what, that's what we are creating with the data and 
to and the, but the pre well, I'm not going to sh uh, talk about this because there has been a really uh, good talks about uh, word and representations with glove and so on and so forth. I'll be talking about the primal before it in terms of the text information extraction from text data. So it's ju I'm just going to go through a very fundamental step in terms of uh, working with text data. So let me switch over right here. So. Alright, so uh, don't worry, I'll be sharing this uh, notebook later on after with the PyCon community. So to illustrate my point, I'll be mainly sharing uh, these three methods. So it's, I'm not going to go through all the methods in the interest of time. So it's, the first one would be a simple dictionary search with an in statement. The second one would be regular expressions or in short, regex. And the third is uh, flash text. So Just a show of hands, has anybody used flash text before? None of you has used flash text before. Oh, so, Alright, so good. So I think you'll be we can have a good uh you'll be a fresh you'll be fresh for you guys. So to for the sake of this exercise, I'm gonna look at the most popular Python packages in the online job market. So uh this is a preloaded file from the popular Python wheels. So I'm just using beautiful soap to clean it the HTML. So uh, I think these are some of the packages that uh will be familiar to you guys here. And this is a much larger dictionary. This is about uh, this is from PyP Simple. This is this data set is a lot more dirty. It will require some cleaning before we were to use it. But just to give everyone an uh, idea of the scale of it, it's about 360 for the popular packages, the first one, and about 137,000 for the second one. So, in this, I'm gonna extract a sample job description. So this job description is a uh, real data from our uh, database. So I think this is a data scientist role. So right here, what we would need to extract would be the packages here, right? Scikit-learn, pandas, so on and so forth. So let's start with the easiest and fastest uh, uh, method to implement. So this is just really simple. Just for each, pack, for each package, check if it's inside. So we, we will get panda, scikit-learn, and sh. But immediately, I'm sure a lot of you guys will, will know that uh, there will be quite a few issues. Firstly, that it's not case sensitive. So the Python in the job description was title case. So the, if you were to look for all lower, lower case, it will not capture it. Of course, a quick hack would be to lowercase the entire job description. But with this, we might lose certain information because acronyms might be important to, uh, to in interpret the meaning of the word. Another, word. another issue with this method is we will we'll bump into word boundaries because, for example, extracting information from information. So this would be a false hit here. So in terms of, uh, let's look at the time taken to do it. So it's about 600 or so microseconds. And in terms of the larger dictionary of about uh, 137,000, this would take about, uh, this is about 200 milliseconds. So if 200 milliseconds, if we were to multiply it by, let's say, 9 million documents, this would easily take us 5 hours to do this. So this is a no-go for us. So the next, so sorry, to sum it up, uh, it's really fast and easy to code, but uh, there's case-sensitive issues, word boundaries, and it does not really scale very well, especially if I would look at the large keywords, list of keywords and large uh, text corpus. The next method is with regular expressions. So regular expressions is really powerful, it's really uh, customizable, but it, it takes a while to be really good at the syntax. So I'm just going to go through this. I will pre-compile a simple regex to extract scikit-learn. So from this sentence, we can easily uh, pull out the different variations, scikit-learn, scikit-learn, sklearn, so on and so forth. So although it's powerful, but uh, it's susceptible to the uh, how clean your text is. So this is an actual problem that we have encountered before. So ideal text is a really nice, perfect sentence we can grab out. I have learned about SK, scikit learn in Python. And then this is something we call a sleepy text. We call it that way because it looks as if someone has slept on his spacebar. <laughs> so is that this is an actual sentence that we, we got, actually. So um, it's a lot of white spaces, about 5,000 or so white spaces. So while we were extracting it, 
our regex kind of uh, stuck on this particular document for for a while. So we thought, oh, is there a bug in our uh, in our document? But it's not. It's because of the white spaces. So with that, uh, it's still a, a little bit of limitation here. So we have to account for this. Uh, uh, we have to do a little bit of pre-processing. -pre so for the sake of the comparison, I will look at regex as well. Uh, to do it objectively, I will pre-compile all the package. So we have some word boundary here. So Python will need double slashes for word boundary. And then, as you can see, it, it's a little bit faster than the... Um, the dictionary search method is about 12.6 milliseconds here. And it's also more accurate actually. It's only Pandas and Scikit-learn that was picked up. Because SH previously was a force hit from the uh, word boundary, because of the word boundary. So this is another um, regex here that I would like to illustrate. So this is a run of the mill regex to extract uh, email addresses. So anybody can just tell me why it doesn't work on this sentence. Well, actually it's because of this uh, start of character here. So. Um, I'm not sure if, if, it, if it's shown very well, but what I'm trying to say is it affects, in terms of, if this were to get more complex and there were, you will need different regex for different variations, it can get a little bit hard to maintain the code. So that's what I'm trying to illustrate here. So uh, in short, regex is really powerful, gives a lot of flexibility, but in terms of uh, code maintainability and scale, in terms of <laughs> getting lots of keywords is not there, and the complexity could impede it in terms of the readability of it. So lastly, I'll talk about flash tags, which is uh, what we, we are employing in drop tag. So uh, flash tag is a fairly new package created by Vikash Singh. So he has is a really awesome package. He has written a really good explanation of the article here. So please go, and go ahead and check it out. So I've heard from my uh, CS colleague that this, is, it, this taps on the tree search algorithm to improve search timings. So um, and he said that it was it's probably something that you learn from the undergraduate years in the data structures and algorithm module, right? So I will go ahead and import the module. So I'll add in all the keywords, the same thing. So in terms of the relative length, it's about 360 to 137 again. So this is a factor of about 350 of difference. And, but in terms of the time taken to extract it, is only 50% more. So it's really powerful in terms of extracting large number of keywords from uh, 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 a massive number of documents. So in terms of the volume of, the, of uh, data that we are getting, it's millions of data every week. If we were to run it on uh, 150, 100, 100 million of jobs data, it would take us days just to extract uh, a list of this size. And our list is probably bigger than this. So that's the issue that we are trying to mitigate with uh, flash tags here. But of course, uh, with this speed, right, there is some uh, loss in the accuracy. So I'm about to show that here. So I'll be adding uh, scikit-learn to it. So if I were to extract scikit-learn from this sentence, no problem. But if there was just a little bit white, a little white space right here, the, the flash tags would have failed here. So what is required is a little bit of pre-processing, but we are falling back on regex for this. But this would run a lot faster. So I'm removing any white space more than one. And then the raw text, the clean text would be like this. And then I would, I would have successfully uh, extracted it. So the idea here is that flash text is really fast. It scales very well with uh, big, a big list of keywords and uh, massive number of documents. But the issue would be that it's not as flexible as regular expressions in a sense that you can't account for uh, <coughs> let's say spaces or numbers in between the words. So it has to capture the entire word as it is. So to really use it you have to do uh, pre-processing or post-processing before you were to employ flash tags. So that's the idea. So I'll be a little bit more scientific on this. This is, the, uh, this is from the original author. Okay, for on the y-axis, it shows the time taken to extract each term. And on the x-axis, the, it's the number of terms. So you can see that flash text starts to outperform regex when the number of terms exceeds 300 or so. 
But uh, in, in our case here, when we are in our example, the number of terms is 137,000. So in terms of flash, the flash is really, really outperforms regex by a factor of... So this is what I'm trying to show in terms of information extraction. Mm. Alright, so I have went through uh, dictionary, uh, simple dictionary search, uh, regex search and then a flash text. So flash text is the advantage is that it's really a lot faster. But um, now it's, move on, it's time to move on to the results of it. So uh, anybody want to take a guess what is the most popular Python package in Singapore? Django. <laughs> sorry? Django. Django. Oh, that's a really good guess. So sorry, there's no prizes of being right. <laughs> yes, Django is top. And uh, Flask is next, actually. Flask is next, Ansible, Pandas, and so on and so forth. So, um, but please, uh, so this is the data that is from July 2017 to now. So, but please do not take it as a measure of the demand of these packages because not every employer would feel the need to put the exact packages that they use in the job descriptions. So, this is just a re really exercise we do for fun here. Yeah. So, I see that some people are taking photos. All right. So, um, so, in short, to summarize, so we really love to use Python and job tech. And uh, the portal was created with the, from, the, from the perspective of job seekers. And um, in, in this case, we are really uh, creating the data. We are using the data to build better matching algorithms for the, that serve both the employers and the job seekers because we believe that uh, the ultimate goal is to have a good match between them. And uh, for those who are not very familiar with all the packages here, please go ahead. I think maybe the, the package that people will be more uh, not as familiar with would be flash text and word to rec maybe. Yep. So if you are interested to know more about how we employ them in a very text heavy environment, please uh, approach me after the talk or ask any questions about it. Yep. So uh, thank you and I will open up for any questions. Yeah. Yep. Sorry? Li yeah. Liami P. G you know, like Grab, is it? Yeah. Grab. Grab, huh? uh, yeah. Um, I believe uh, one of my colleagues have done so before, but it's it's also it works almost like like regex, right? So it was not really a lot faster actually. Mm. So he has he has done some comparison with this because uh, we run this quite often. So we have done different performance metrics on this, and flash text really beat the rest in terms of pure speed. But in terms of robustness of the accuracy, we would need uh, other layers to filter over it. Mm. Any other questions? Mm. Yeah. Could you please like benchmark something very simple, like flash text versus iterating over over the text to like. Uh, Exact match. Because in the example you showed, the flash text worked well with the exact match. It didn't work when there was no exact match. Mm. So, how well did it work with just comparing it to just testing, like just looping over, over the text and, uh, and checking for exact match? Um, that would be like the first method that we talk about, right? Mm. Is it the dictionary exactly. search? Looping, looping over that. So in terms of uh, if the number of keywords would increase, so sorry, for let's say a small keywords list is about the same. But if the key keywords list was to increase exponentially, then the time taken would be a lot longer. Yeah, so that was the issue that we had because our keywords list is, is really so a lot. Because we have to uh, uh, account for variations as well. Okay. So the, the, the tree is actually like, uh, this is like thanks to the tree. The yeah. Yeah, thanks to the stream because it, it searches the first character and then it skips any subsequent char characters that doesn't meet. So it doesn't have to go through the entire list of 137,000 keywords. So that's the, the main reason why it's a lot faster. Yeah. Mm. 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 Yeah, the, the, could flash text be improved to be able to treat also cases that are beyond exact match? Um, I think right now the package only allows for uh, case sensitive. <laughs> Uh, right now, we haven't uh, altered the amend the source code yet, so we're just doing uh, pre-processing and post-processing to around it, uh, rather than. Mm. Any more questions? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
more questions? Okay, yeah, I think thanks guys. Thanks. Appreciate it.